Sarah Jones and welcome to this week's Maths Cast. You have just seen the first teaser for the Maths Annual Science Meeting. It is happening online and it is happening from the 5th to the 9th of October this year. So please stay tuned for more information to come in the next couple of weeks where we are going to be releasing more information on our social media streams and on our mailing lists. So if you haven't already, please join us on Twitter, LinkedIn and also sign up to our mailing lists where there are going to be a lot more information about how you can register and how you can be a speaker or even have a poster in our online conference this year. It's Mars' 10 year anniversary and it is called Mars A Decade of Innovation. So uh, please stay tuned for more information to come but at the moment just mark that in your diaries that the 5th to the 9th of October is going to be Mars Annual Science Meeting. And now for the rest of the Mars cast. In this week's edition I chat to Joey O'Connor from JNCC about the proposed MPA off the west of Scotland and how he's been involved and how Mars members could potentially get involved in the future with this work. Last week's Mars webinar speaker was Dr. Maria Donellas from the University of St Andrews and her talk was titled Changing Seas, Biodiversity Change in the Recent Past. If this is a talk that interests you, please check out the uh, video link that is below this video and you'll be able to watch it there along with its Q&A session as well. Next week's speaker is Dr. Hermione Coburn, the Scientific Director for Our Dynamic Earth. Her talk is titled Discovering the Deep, Public Engagement Outcomes and Legacy from the Atlas Project. If this is a talk that interests you, please check out the registration link that is below this video and uh, please look at all the other upcoming talks that we have as well. The 2nd of September is our last webinar that is going to be happening this year. We're going to give ourselves a little bit, a bit of a break before the Mars Annual Science Meeting. So before that actually happens, you can get your marine science fix from our webinar series. If you can't attend any of the webinars, don't worry. Every single session is always recorded and uploaded to our Mars webinar series playlist. And if you're looking to boost your CV, the Journal of Aquatic Conservation, Marine and Freshwater Ecosystems is looking for an associate editor. This is a position that will be working alongside the chief editor, John Baxter, and is roughly for three years and will approximately cover about 35 papers a year. Uh, if this is something that interests you, please check out the link that is below this video for more information. And you'll also find John's email if you have any specific inquiries. This is a position that might be best suited for people who are postdocs or early career researchers. But if you're interested, please just contact John anyway and express your interest if you have any other questions as well. Earlier this week, NOC published its National Marine Facilities Technology Roadmap, which is now 2020 to 2021. This has had a refresh and includes sections on planning, data creation and also the development of research ship capabilities. The document provides a full picture of the support that is available to the UK marine science community by the NMF and the British Oceanographic Data Centre. If you would like to check out this document, please look at the link that is below this video. And just a couple of dates that I would like to make you aware of. On the 7th and 8th of July, so that is next week, the primary conference is now going to be held online by the University of Plymouth. This is also free, so if this is something that you've been meaning to sign up for, please check out the link that is just below this video. You'll be able to see the list of speakers and uh, that is going to be on those two days. And this two day event is going to be talking all about marine renewable energy, such as policy, planning, management and everything else that is associated with it. So please check out the link that is below this video for that. And lastly, this is now my chat with Joey O'Connor from JNCC about the proposed West of Scotland MPA. I asked Joey what makes this area so special and why is it needing to be protected? Hi Hannah, uh, well thanks for the opportunity to, to come on and talk to you a bit about uh, where we are with the, the proposed West of Scotland MPA. Um, so the uh, area itself is to the west of Scotland, as the name, name implies, running from the slope out to Rockall and uh, George Bly Banks. Um, it, we're looking at about uh, over, over 100,000 uh, square kilometres of diverse marine landscape, um, including Rosemary Bank Seamount and Anton Doran Seamount. Um, and um, the area itself contains lots of um, very interesting habitat and species features that we're hoping to designate, including coral gardens, deep sea sponge aggregations, um, deep sea muds, and uh, also the, the species such as the gulper shark and leaf scale gulper shark, um, not to mention um, the Reynolds grenadier and uh, um, lots, lots of other important fish species. And the area is also uh, proposed to be designated to protect seven geodiversity features that are within the within the site. 
So as a part of the proposed MPA, there was a consultation that closed on the 31st of December. What was that? What was the response like for that? Yeah, so the Scottish Government ran the consultation from, from last September through to December, as you say, and uh, they had a really, really good response rate. Um, so they're now considering what to, what to do on the, on the back of that consultation with a, a decision on designation expected in the autumn. Mm-hmm. And what's next for JNCC? Well, so for, for ourselves in collaboration with uh, Marine uh, Scotland partners, we're hoping to, um, assuming designation happens, focus on some of the, the research areas that were uh, identified throughout the consultation where um, we feel it's really, really important to gather a bit more information and Really, that's where we're we're hoping to um, to work more with the mass community to try to look at look into some of these research areas. So these uh, include the deeper sedimentary habitats within within the MPA. Um, for example, where they are, what kind of sediments are present, um, what functions um, those um, uh, habitats and communities are are, are providing. Um, we really don't have a huge amount of information of, of what's in those those areas within the MPA. Um, we're also very interested in the important fish nursery habitats uh, within the proposed MPA. Um, so, for example, for the, the gulper sharks and for the ling. Um, and you know, we very much appreciate that Marine Scotland Science colleagues carry out a huge amount of work um, on on that area um, on the. Uh, the Research Festival of Scotia. Um, so we're looking to tie in with, with a lot of that work, um, but also other work that others in the community will be doing. We're also interested in finding out more about the cetaceans within within the area. Um, for example, sperm whale, which we know passed through, but uh, don't have a huge, huge amount of information mm-hmm. for. Uh, and um, finally, I guess the whole topic of, of connectivity. So whether that's from a, a genomic um perspective or looking at larval dispersal uh, is an an area that we are very very interested in knowing a bit more about. Okay that uh, I can already see that linking into lots of the mast forums that we have just from that short description so um, when do you feel like this kind of this is all going to kick off uh, if I may say so? (laughs) Yeah well so as as I said we're uh, hoping for a a decision in the autumn um, while in, in the back in the background of that we're hoping to organize a, a workshop for mass members to uh, come together and, and to get get their input that way I don't have a date for that as of yet but once I do we'll be sure to um, let, let the wider community know um, and yeah it'd be great to get people's input um, to try and make the most of the opportunity that this MPA if designated will provide us all Excellent. That sounds like a great research opportunity and for us to collaborate across the mass community. Uh, for people who are watching this video who are interested in the proposed MPA, uh, they can find out more information on the Scott Government website where also all the consultation feedback is found. Um, and obviously there is the full length YouTube video that was featured in our um, conversation just earlier. Thank you very much, Jerry, and Thank you. best of luck with the proposed MPA. Cheers. Thank you very much. If you're interested about reading the consultation, the responses from those who agreed to be published and also what JNCC is going to be doing next, please check out the link that is below this video and you'll be able to see it all there as well. Hopefully we'll be having a bit more information about this in the autumn, as Joey said, about what's going to be happening for this proposed MPA and potentially how masks can get involved. So stay tuned for more information about that later this year. That's everything for this week. Uh, Please join us on Twitter if you haven't already. We provide lots of updates on there. And also there's going to be a lot more information about our annual science meeting that's going to be coming on there. So you'll be the first to know about anything that we release about that if you join us on Twitter, LinkedIn, or just sign up for our mailing list, which are a lot more detailed than on social media and also can cater for our different research forums. So if there's a particular interest in marine science that interests you, we have mailing lists for these different types of topics that our forums cover. So that's everything for this week. Stay tuned and stay safe.